Taking you south of the border now, U.S. President Donald Trump reportedly wanted to deploy 10,000 troops to control protests in Washington last week, but top military officials opposed it. However, 1,600 active duty members were sent to the outskirts of the U.S. Capitol this weekend on standby. Acting Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf was asked on Fox News Sunday if calling in the military is overkill. Making sure that we keep all our tools in the toolbox ready and available is very, very important. We won't want to take anything off the table. Again, I would, I would emphasize where we were five, six, seven days ago when that protesting, the violent protesting and the looting and the rioting was out of control. Ravi Perry joins me now. He's the chair and professor in the Department of Political Science at Howard University. Ravi, thank you very much for giving us your time today. Oh, I'm glad to be with you. I want to get your reaction to what you were hearing there, how the White House is reacting to protesters as they continue to peacefully march, uh, and yet there is that military presence, that possible military presence. Well, uh, we did see today uh, that Trump has ordered the removal of National Guard troops from Washington, D.C. Uh, it seems as though uh, Mayor Muriel Bowser's uh, symbolic but significant gesture of having the two, three blocks that lead to Lafayette Square right in front of the White House be emblazoned with the bright yellow letters of Black Lives Matter really did seem to uh, strike a chord with President Trump. And uh, within uh, 24, less than 48 hours, mm -hmm. uh, he has uh, uh, capitulated to my Mayor Bowser's request to remove the troops. How do you feel Americans are responding to how the president has been responding to the demonstrations that have been happening over the past couple of weeks? Well, what we have seen is that America and all of its diversity is on the same page when it comes to the murder of George Floyd. We have had countless murders of, of, of black and brown people in this country in particular, including black trans Americans mm -hmm. uh, that have never gotten the not, uh, light of day, never seen the light of day, never made it on news, and certainly did not result in millions of people around the world marching, most of whom we can emphasize um, are people of color, but largely supported by white and Caucasian allies. And in this country, where um, African Americans are only 13 percent of the population, uh, it is true, remains true, that the efforts that we seek, that we may want in terms of demands, mm -hmm. as, for example, articulated by groups like Black Lives Matter, ultimately will require the successful coalition building between mm -hmm. blacks and whites in this country. So with this being an election year then, um, that call for change, you talked about that, that need for that unity and that collective uh, action. Mm. How do you anticipate things could potentially play out at the polls or in terms of where the voter mentality is right now as I look forward to November? Well, it seems as though more people this time around are talking about voting than never before. Mm. Snoop Dogg, the artist, the rapper Snoop Dogg, said he's never voted before. He has now said he's going to vote this time. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, who is the former uh, 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 San Francisco 49ers um, uh, quarterback, right, who uh, the NFL just this week uh, finally apologized, saying that they uh, were wrong to ignore his protest. They mm -hmm. did not mention his name, however. But uh, even he has suggested that voting matters. And so it seems as though people have been awakened. Mm -hmm. uh, the question will be, however, will they be able to maintain this momentum mm -hmm. through November? Uh, we know from history in American protests, Occupy Wall Street is a great example from a couple years ago, is that when the weather changes, mm -hmm. uh, when seasons change, uh, protests tend to change as well, and people tend to uh, uh, lose some interest. And I will hope that when COVID-19 subsides and, and the 40 million Americans that are out, out of work now, Mm -hmm. go back to work, that, that somehow, um, if Americans genuinely believe that this president has uh, created some new wrongs that we all find a disagreement with, even if we may be members of different political parties, mm -hmm. uh, then they will need to find a way to ensure that this momentum continues through November. Yeah, certainly. I think you, you can make an excellent point there. Ravi Perry, chair and professor in the Department of Political Science at Howard University, will continue to follow this. Appreciate you.